I find the gray alien to be such a revolting entity that I can barely handle sharing screen space with one of these entities when I'm making a video, but as you can see, those are a couple of representations of one type of gray that people have encountered. And in this video, I want to talk about what exactly these creatures are that have invaded our imaginations and that have been reported by so many people and get into also this deeper subject of uh, multi-dimensions, how this relates to what we talk about in this channel, like astral projection and life after death and other paranormal topics. Uh, if you're just joining us, my name is Cyrus. This is Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. Before we continue, please punch the holy trifecta of YouTube, which is like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Without that, I can't keep this channel going because YouTube will basically blacklist the channel unless it is showing popularity. So I really need your help with that. To continue, the gray alien. So I just hate these creatures. Look at that you know, huge bulbous eyes. And it always has like this hateful expression on its face. Little tiny nose. And it's just, to me, it's just a revolting entity. Although one could wonder if uh, they find us to be revolting and they think that themselves as being quite pretty. Who knows? But the gray alien has been encountered so many times it cannot be disregarded. And I like to look at topics like this on a multi-dimensional level. A very limited level is that we would interpret these entities as being physical creatures that come down on a spaceship and abduct people. But we know that in these topics, nothing is ever quite so simple. And that's why there was never any physical evidence of these types of things, because we're dealing with a multi-dimensional subject. The gray alien is right there with the multi-dimensional subject. So people often report being abducted by these entities, and typically it seems to relate to genetic experimentation. So the, the, the gene stuff in our bodies, the kind of physical, energetic representation that makes humans human, or makes a cat a cat, makes a donkey a donkey, um, they need that stuff because who knows? Some people say they make hybrids, some say that their species depends upon it, uh, their survival depends upon it. We don't really know for sure, but there's a lot of literature about these guys and what they do to people. My interpretation is that most abduction experiences, though, are not happening in this dimension. When we go out of body, we can be in a form that looks and feels just like our current body. It is entering into what some will call a higher density level where our body is essentially replicated you know the whole body skin cells fingers fingernails it's replicated onto this other dimension and people existing on that other dimension may not even know that they're over there and this is what happens permanently when you die when you die in this dimension you basically wake back up in the other dimension depending on what level you go to if it's this kind of lower middle level it may look and feel just like this world, although there are differences which you'll discover shortly afterwards. Please see my other videos for information about that, where I talk about the astral plane and what to expect when you die. So you can just uh, click on the main video link on this channel in the description and you can browse all the videos to learn more about that to continue. So if that's the case, it, is, it would seem from the accounts I've read these entities come into your room astrally, essentially in the near-Earth astral, as some people call it. And they pull you out of your astral body and take you into one of their spaceships, which is essentially sharing the you know the universe space with maybe the, we call the astral dimension or whatnot. And then the experiments are performed. They cover up the memories. And they put you back in your body. And then you end up with this weird halfway mem point memory that comes back again and again like in dreams where you have the vision of these entities embedded into your subconscious and uh, that is my estimation of how this kind of stuff happens but we have to keep in mind that there's also a possibility that they could physically come to this dimension as well my rough guess is that 
entities <clears throat> this advanced have the capability of basically pushing a button on their ships. God, I, I have allergies coming in again. Hold on. Oh. Something always blooms in December and my, my nose just... Anyway. Hey, this is the unedited video, guys. Like, I'm not gonna go in uh, Adobe Premiere and, like, you know, waste an hour fiddling with that. You get the raw cut. Anyway, to continue. Um, so, it seems likely to me that any entity like this has the ability to simply punch a button and go between different realms very easily, very efficiently. And so there's no reason to assume that these entities can't do that and come down to this dimension, but it just seems more practical for them to take us on the astral level. So what are they? Where do they come from? Some people say that they're from the Zeta Reticuli system. Uh, other people have other theories. The way I see it is that there's many different entities that fit this archetype of what they look like with the big eyes, the small nose, the little tiny mouth. Some people say that they are us in the future, but I don't know if I buy that. They really are. They seem like a different species to me. So they, they seem like they've you know a cross between a mammalian species and a, and an insect. So they kind of have those two different components happening. And uh, this representation, I don't really know who did this artwork. Um, I think these are like three D models, but it's uh, I think it's a very close approximation to what people have actually reported. With at least one particular type of gray alien. Um, so the way I see it, if this is an archetype, then there's many different types of entities that can look like this, and all of them can potentially exist uh, on a astral spectrum. And when that astral spectrum interacts with our spectrum, these very entities may appear ethereal, they may appear ghost-like. It's only when we're out of body that, that they will appear solid and physical to us, or else they will literally be like spirits, just like any other spirit, any, any other spirit encounter. To understand this, let's look at a couple photos. The first photo was revealed by the researcher Nancy Talbot, and allegedly the photo was shot by a young man in Belgium, in I suppose like a living room. I don't know the origins behind the photo, where it came from, but let's take a look. So this is, um, hopefully you can see it all right, um, my, hopefully my video screen isn't covering it up. Uh, this is uh, a good example of an ethereal representation of one of these entities appearing in somebody's home and to us it's like a spirit or a ghost because its density level doesn't resonate with our own so it appears like a phantasm. Now I've seen a lot of in incidences like this between both photographic evidence and some real life and types of things. When I was at the Afterlife Symposium some of the speakers posed for a photograph and something that looked very similar to this was hanging out above them like it was photobombing everybody. <laughs> and uh, that wouldn't surprise me because, you know, there was a symposium literally talking about, like, other dimensions and things of that nature. And so there were actually multiple uh, reports of kind of, like, extraterrestrial visitations that happened at that, at that symposium of them checking out what's going on. So we should restrict ourselves to thinking that whatever these, this, whatever these entities are, that they are restricted to being physical and three-dimensional, I guess. Uh, this seems to be the most common way that we see them is in this kind of spirit form, basically sharing the same wavelength as our deceased loved ones. I'm going to show the next, uh, the next uh, photo. This comes from the skull experiments. If you don't know what the skull experiments are, please go on YouTube and put in skull experiments, find the skull documentary, because that'll change your life. At Skull, which was a, basically a physical mediumship session or fact, practice that was taking place in a town called Skull, England for a couple of years in the mid to late 90s, all types of entities began appearing for people sometimes illuminated in the dark. One of them was a, quote, extraterrestrial they called Blue. Let's take a look at what Blue looked like when he would appear. So there's Blue. 
Um, as you can see, again, that's similar representation, the big eyes, the almond shape, small nose, maybe small non-existent mouth. So blue, of course, was very benevolent uh, and very spiritually advanced. With these entities, I don't know how benevolent they might be, but what we know about is that this form rep encompasses many different types of uh, creatures. So the gray alien is not merely one alien. They're not all out to get you, but some do seem to inhabit a lower vibrational level. And maybe they don't have necessarily evil intentions, but maybe they don't have our best interests in mind either. As kind of a final note, there's a lot more I can go into with regard to this subject, and maybe I will in the future. But these uh, entities have been described in much greater detail among certain contactees. I've enjoyed listening to the contactee accounts of a man named Tony Rodriguez. You can find him on YouTube. I recommend his uh, exopolitics interviews where he talks about like this being you know, sent into some kind of secret space program, things of this nature. But he began his whole long experience by being abducted by some gray aliens. And I remember him basically saying in one of, you know, among all of his accounts that at the end of the day, despite how nasty and unpleasant and perhaps terrifying these entities look, uh, some of them had a sense of humor, could tell jokes, and they basically were clocking in, going to work, working for their own government agencies, and then at the end of the day, going back home to their planet, hanging out with their families. So as repulsive as they may seem to us, I think it is good to also take a step back and realize that you know, they may very well still be leading normal lives and it's to us that they're so, so alien and terrifying. And even if some of them aren't the nicest entities, um, you know, a lot of times they may just be performing a job. And if you ever do encounter one of them, it's probably best to attempt to treat it like an individual person and uh, certainly wouldn't hurt to gain its uh, sympathy as you know as um, a non-hostile person or you know that you can have some few things in common <laughs> like if I were being abducted by these things I would do whatever I could to uh, minimize the potential damage of the experience kind of get them on my side if you can crack a few jokes I don't know. I mean, if, when you're in a crazy situation like that, usually the best thing to do is to try to make friends. <laughs> Those are just some thoughts tonight. Um, if you like this kind of thing, look, I have a lot more stuff you can get involved with. Check out the YouTube description. Uh, you can go to afterlifetopics.com, see some of the books I write. The Facebook group, Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, it's very, um, very detailed group. It's definitely something to check out. Uh, lots of discussions, getting very big. And that's about it. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Be careful of the gray aliens. Oh yeah, you know, one last one last tip that I'll throw out there. Some people encounter these things when they're going out of body. Always remember that you have control, especially if you're in your astral body. As long as you can gain consciousness, become aware of what's happening, then you ultimately will have power over any entity that uh, attempts to kidnap you or mess with you. And it's all a battle of the mind. Anything, anything, that, anything that wishes to abduct you or cause problems, uh, they're relying on your own ignorance that you don't realize that you have power and nothing can do anything to you if you don't let it happen. So keep that in mind should you ever find these things staring down at you. Hopefully not. I'll catch you in the next video.